The Fellowship of the Great Physician welcomes you to House Call. Our hosts today are doctors of chiropractic, Dr. Gerald Lala and Dr. Richard Jensen, who is also a board-certified acupuncturist, practice independently in North Oaks, Minnesota. Let's join our hosts for today's program that will assist you in your quest for optimum health and well-being. Welcome to House Call. I'm Dr. Jerry Lala. And I'm Dr. Richard Jensen. Wonderful to have you with us on this dimension of House Call. And look what we're going to talk about today, Discovering Your Biochemical Nature, Part 1. There's four parts to this series, and of course, this is Part 1. Give you a little history of it. I've always been interested, certainly as a chiropractic physician, in natural health and what causes disease and what we can do naturally to try and rectify the disease process. And I've been interested in the psychological nature always been interested in that as well as a spiritual nature and that in part is related to not only my education as a chiropractic physician but that as well as an ordained minister. Well we're going to take a little history in this step, kind of a little journey it goes back to um, the early 1990s. Um, certainly my education in chiropractic college um, gave us a very good background in the basic sciences and the natural healing sciences. And of course Hippocrates, Hippocrates is known as a father of medicine, and he had formulated, when it comes to personalities, what he called the four temperaments or humors. The four temperaments or humors, and of course these things have been refined and, uh, and plagiarized over and over through the years, but he had the following temperaments he identified where he called them caloric, melancholic, sanguine, and phlegmatic. And the four humors, he believed, were yellow liver bile, that's caloric, melancholic, the humor is black kidney bile, sanguine is blood from the heart, and phlegmatic is phlegm from the lungs. Now the personality he felt was of the temperament was hot-headed, the personality of the melancholic was anxious, the personality of the sanguine was lazy and carefree, and the phlegmatic character, personality, personality characteristics were lack of emotion. And that went on for years, and psychologists and Freud and a lot of other people have gotten into different issues about that. And now Dr. Jensen is going to talk about the four different blood type theories. Uh, thank you, Dr. Lala. Why don't I pass that back to you oh, since you, want me you to have do that, that information? All right. <laughs> All right, I have that. It's not in your notes. All right. Well, recently we've heard about the blood type diet, that if you're a certain blood type, then these are the foods you should or should not eat. So if you were... If your blood type was O, you were supposed to eat lean, chemical-free meat, high-protein, low-carbohydrate. Do not attempt to be a vegetarian. Cut out wheat and most other grains. Engage in vigorous aerobic exercise. And fourthly, your risk factors for ulcers and inflammatory diseases, such as arthritis, increase if you eat incorrectly for your type. If you're a blood type O or a blood type B, you have the most flexible diet choices of all blood types. Your risk for slow-growing viruses that may attack your nervous system, such as MS, increases if you eat incorrectly. If your blood type is A, you should be a vegetarian. I'm telling you what the books say. Engage in gentle exercises. Meditate to deal with your stress. Risk factors from diabetes. Your risk factors as a blood type A are diabetes, cancer, heart disease increase if you eat incorrectly. If your blood type is AB, you have the rarest of all blood types. You have all the benefits and intolerances, that's right, intolerances of blood type A and blood type B. You are to engage in calming exercises and relaxation techniques. You have the friendliest immune system. Then we began to encounter Tim LaHaye, who's an ordained Baptist minister. Some of you may have seen him. He's related to Jerry Falwell uh, and his college. And we also got involved with some psychological profiling by Kersey Bates, uh, which Dr. Jensen is going to talk about now. Thank you, Dr. Lala. It, uh, we, we must uh, remain conscious of the fact that certain metabolic types or biochemical uh, backgrounds that people have 
they will start to act in different ways, such as the person who has boundless energy is bound to have uh, to be more extroverted or um, more of a hands-on kind of person than somebody who just doesn't have the energy. They might be more of a thinking or introverted type or a even be a little more creative in that aspect. And these are certainly generalities, but trends that we see within these metabolic types. And therefore, have related some of those metabolic types to different personalities, of which is just the first part of seeing some of this biochemical nature. So as we talked about earlier with the temperaments and the humors of uh, Hippocrates, we uh, bring us forward to the 1980s where David Kersey and Marilyn Bates um, two diagnosticians of uh, dysfunctional behavior wrote, wrote a book entitled Please Understand Me. This book took the four temperaments as well as 16 Meyer Briggs types and formulated the Kersey Temperament Sorter, which assists in identifying 16 possible personality types. And these personality types um, precipitated their development of the concept of the extrovert to introvert the sensing or intuitive person, the thinking, feeling, and the judging, perceiving parts of preferences. So to go over those preferences again, there's an extrovert, introvert, sensing, intu intuition, or, are, or they look at thinking, or are they more of a feeling type of person? Are they a judging person? Or do they just perceive things more as they actually are? Dr. Lala? And as I said, a Baptist pastor came along um, back in the late 70s, he and his wife uh, Beverly and uh, Dr. Tim LaHaye, an ordained uh, pastor, wrote a book on the transformed temperaments and on the spirit-controlled temperaments, and that made a significant contribution from a biblical perspective. Then I uh, encountered an endocrinologist by the name of Elliot Abravanel, He's a, he wrote a book um, back in the 1980s called Body Type Program in which he suggested that all people have a, a genetic predisposition to glandular dominance and this is where we're going now. We're not going to touch the psychological aspects, we're not going to touch the spiritual aspects, we're going to focus in this series on the glandular dominance of people and you can very easily determine that by looking at yourself in the mirror and you'll see this now. He suggested that based on one's particular genetic glandular dominance, its secretions not only affect the personality, but the person's physical health as well. He suggested that four dominant glands are present in our body, that these, we have a lot of glands, we have exocrine and endocrine glands, but these four glands have a significant dominance on our health, and they are as follows. T, meaning that this person is thyroid dominant. A, meaning that they are adrenal dominant, so thyroid here, adrenal down above your kidneys. P, pituitary in your brain, and G, gonad. Dr. Abobinil also suggested that certain families of foods either have a stimulating or depressing effect upon the principal glands of the body and its secretions. This, does, this not only affects one's personality, but one's health as well. He feels that foods and their inherent chemical makeup, in effect, act like drugs on the body and can alter one's mood dramatically. So Abravanel's work is much more significant than the zone or the blood typing diets, or for that matter, uh, Atkins, which is just saying, you know, get off the carbohydrates. Our research using several of the works on these temperaments as well as the biochemical natures of people and led us to the conclusion that there are basic temperaments as well as various body types and glandular dominance. Now, the key here is, one key here is that we need to remember that a person just isn't solely thyroid dominant, they are not exclusively adrenal dominant, they are not exclusively pituitary dominant, and they are not exclusively uh, gonad dominant. Now, Women are the only ones who have the ability to be gonad dominant. Even though men have testes, they do not, in, in, in Abravanel's concepts, believe that men can be gonad dominant unless they have gone over to the homosexual side. So it becomes important then that we do not pigeonhole people. 
now what we have also found over the years as there been become more diagnostic tests to test these theories that when we began running food allergy tests on people and we knew that they were adrenal dominant or thyroid dominant pituitary dominant or gonad dominant and we began to see a very clear pattern that the a people had allergies to the foods that Abravanel felt they would. We found the same thing with thyroid dominant, adrenal, adrenal dominant, as well as gonad dominant. So we're going to look now at some slides, some illustrations of some living people as well as people who have passed on and about their body characteristics now. In the other programs that we're going to uh, uh, broadcast for you is we're going to take next week, we're going to take just the, we're going to focus only on adrenal dominance, the week after only on thyroid dominance, and the week after only on pituitary dominant, and the week after only on go gonad dominant. And we're not going to mix it with spiritual or psychological temperaments. We're going to look at it purely as physical with reference to health and healing and either losing weight or not being an anorexic or a bulimic, all right? So let's start bringing up those slides now. So if we look here, we see Marilee Tyler Moore and uh, what's that um, movie actress down there? Jodie Foster. Jodie Foster. We see President Bush. And the other guy is... Um, James Kahn. James Kahn. All right. So as, right, as of now, all that we need to go backwards to those folks, okay? And I want to look at them. Again, we need to go backwards. So we see, look at Mary Tyler Moore. She has a high forehead, her hairline is high, so is Jodie Foster, so is President Bush, and so is James Kahn. Now, A-type, adrenal-type people have generally high foreheads, high hairlines, all right? Okay, now look the next one, please. We're going to look then at the adrenal-type metabolism. Here's a few other. There's President Reagan. Look at that hairline. There is the prime, former Prime Minister of uh, Britain. Mar uh, Margaret Thatcher. Margaret Thatcher. There is a, a woman who had a lot of shoes in the Philippine Islands, Amelia Marcos. And there is that, uh, what is his name, Mung Sung Hung or something? Uh, Mung Sa Lo. No, he's that, oh. um, that religion out of Korea. Uh, I forgot his name now. Oh, Sung Young Moon. Yeah, yeah, okay. And then we look over here and we see all of these people have principally, mm. yes, go ahead. And Mikhail Gorbachev. Yes, Gorbachev. And we see A-type foreheads in those people. Now let's go to the next slide, please. Adrenal-type metabolism. If we look more at their bodies now, see there, here this young couple down in the lower left-hand corner, high foreheads on the thin side. Then look at the women on your right. High foreheads. Uh, they generally have larger uh, breasts and they have very, very thin ankles, almost bird-like ankles. Now, are these bad people? No, that's just their genetic predisposition. That's just the way it is, and that's the way their genes are set up, and because of their genetic predispositions, they're going to have certain physical characteristics, and they're going to have certain predispositions to eating certain foods that will stimulate their adrenal glands to give them the power and the energy to get through life. All right, let's go to the next one, then. Now we're looking at thyroid dominant type people. There's um, uh, not Jerry, but the other brother. Um, Dick Van Dyke. Dick Van Dyke. And there's um, uh, a young couple from England that are, uh, she's no longer alive. Two pictures of them. They are, would be classified as thyroid dominant. They have thyroid metabolisms. They don't have the high hairlines as the others does, although Prince Philip has a little bit higher hairline. But Prince his, Charles. Prince Charles, but his uh, former wife is really a classical thyroid dominant individual. Now let's move on to the next one, please. So they're getting their power and their energy out of foods that they eat based on the, the biochemical inclinations and predispositions of their thyroid gland. So when we look at various people based on their hairline, based on their abdomen, based on their chest, based on their thighs and based on their ankles, we can determine what type they are. So let's go to the next slide then, please. So here's a pituitary type dominant. We see some golfers here and different politicians and certainly business people. And these are pituitary dominant. They may have the high hairline, but if you look at the back of their skull, you will always see in the men a, a loss of hair in the back of their skull 
And in the women often, too, you'll see a loss of hair. Like our director of our television show, Paul Fisher, that's him. He's back there. We can see him pointing to his skull right now. He's got a classical A4, AP forehead and a classical P back in the back of his skull. And, and there are certain predispositions to the types of foods he will eat to give him strength to get through life. Okay, next one, please. Now here's a classical gonad dominant, as we said here, that it does not involve men unless they have become homosexuals, all right? So look at this woman now. Uh, she has a tendency to uh, carry her weight in her abdomen. She has, as my wife calls them, stovepipe pipe thighs. And uh, personality-wise, they're very mothering kind of people. They're not real aggressive type people, but they have these characteristics. And believe me, based on their age in life, they will eat in certain foods to stimulate them. So for example, around their menstrual time, they're going to go after foods that are spicy because that's what feeds those uh, 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 or, uh, or gonad dominant characteristics of those people. All right, let's go on now. So well, I think we'll skip that, that particular x-ray. So let's talk a little bit more about these people. So adrenal dominant per personnel, and that's a wonderful slide there. This here is giving us the hairlines of T-types, if you look at it from the left, and then it goes down to A and P, and then over on the right, T, A, and AP. So we said that you are not exclusively a T-type, you're not exclusively an A-type, you're not exclusively a P-type. You are a mixture, okay? So the classical hairlines of a T-type are very much what you see there on the far left. I have a classical T-type hairline, okay? If we go down to the, to the third row, we see the classical hairline of the A-type. See the higher hairline there, okay? And if we go down when they bend their feds forward, we see that as well. Now, if we go down to the bottom two rows on your left, we see the classical P-type hairlines. See the high forehead with the balding spot in the back of the skull. So when we look at them from the side, we can see that, or with their head bent forward, we can see that. Now when we go to the mixture of the thyroid adrenal type dominant, their hairlines change as you can see there. See, there's a, there's a mixture between T and A, and there will always be a predominance of either A, or a predominance of T, or a predominance of P, or a predominance of G. But there will be a, there'll be a strong approach and a more mild approach. And these hairlines, we're going to go through these again on the next program. They're really lots of fun. And you'll be able to look at people, and, and you'll be able to say, I can tell what foods you like the most. And if you really want to learn how they're going to react in personality, it's like almost giving them MMPI, although that measures uh, mostly <laughs> serious illnesses. OK, let's go on now, and we'll talk about these things here. So adrenal dominance have a caloric type personality. Thyroid dominance have more of a melancholic personality. Pituitary dominant people have more of a sanguine personality. And gonad dominant people have more of a phlegmatic personality. So for purposes of this study, we will refer to these combined or integrated physical, biochemical, and personality characteristics as A, adrenal dominant, T, as thyroid dominant, P as pituitary dominant, and G as gonad dominant, and we're going to follow the Dr. Bravenel's approach. Now, some of the keys that are important here. One is we need to find out, we have a pretty good idea what foods are harmful to them and what foods are good to them. If they overuse any of them, then it's going to really cause deleterious effects, and so what we do is we have a, a general idea based on Abravanel's work which foods there are good for these different types and which foods are bad. But what we do then is we do a combined food allergy blood test on them, which tells us very specifically, very specifically, which foods in particular are good for them and which foods in particular are bad for them. Do you have anything to add to that, Dr. Jensen? Well, yeah, when we're looking at metabolic types. This doesn't mean that if you're a T-type or a thyroid type that, uh, that it's all due to your thyroid. It's just that that's the type of endocrine gland that seems to step out the most in Dr. Abravanel's research to say whether it was a thyroid dominant or an adrenal dominant or pituitary dominant or gonad dominant. Now, 
one of the things that you might look at here, because we've talked about some temperaments, is that say there's in a conversation, you're put in a compromised position, how you react may, might be different, such as um, people who may be adrenal dominant, uh, much to their chagrin, while they're put on the spot on something, their adrenaline glands pump in and they've got a lot of fresh adrenaline going through and that's their main drive. And so they may be more confrontational. Whereas somebody who's thyroid dominant uh, and uh, has more of the characteristics of the thyroid dominant might look at it as a more creative uh, way, but they also might be more melancholy. So there's positives and negatives to each of these, to each of these things, such as there's positives and negatives to each of our personalities as to how we react to things in life. And so that's really what we're getting into with this. Also, if you look at that there's four types of, uh, four body types in this regard, three with men and four with women because of that gonad type, it's almost as if your energy, that you have four pistons for energy. And what happens is you'll have a dominant one that you will keep pumping for reserves in that, in that particular gland to create excitation or energy for you. And so what happens is since we keep going towards that dominant one because that's the one that feeds our energy the most, people will tend to go to those foods that feed that particular uh, gland, such as if you're adrenal dominant, you'll go for the red meats. If you're thyroid dominant, you may go for more of the breads and the grains because that seems to feed you more. The problem is, is if you do that, say with the thyroid types, they will, they just don't, th because the blood sugar has such a uh, uh, changing metabolism within you, you might have a lot of energy at one point and then crash and then go up high and then crash because of the release of serotonin it's in your brain and so forth. So it really, those types of people may look for things that give them a more even keel of energy throughout the day and for exercises that give them a more even keel. This is really looking at side and saying, what do I have to change in my diet and in my livelihood in order to change my outlook in life and how I perform so that for me, if I am thyroid dominant, I can change those metabolic processes that give me more of an even keel of energy so that I might, in fact, and rather than just starting a project and being all excited about it and then running out of energy part way through it, I might have more of an even keel energy and maybe uh, take more of, uh, feed more of the adrenal gland or more of the pituitary gland to give that even energy to get me through those processes. Yet once I'm balanced, maybe if I go back to some of those grains, it'll give me the energy to be a little more creative or bring out that part of my personality a little bit more, say, if I'm problem solving. But then I need the energy from the other ones to get me through that process. So uh, any further thoughts on that, Dr. Lawler? Yes, uh, we want to bring up a pamphlet here that will give some excellent explanation with reference to uh, food allergy testing. It's called the uh, Combined IgE and IgG4 food allergy screening. And so there are different screens or metabolic markers in the health industry that we can use. I mean, if we want to check the prostate antigen, you know, we do a P PSA, all right? If we want to check cholesterol, that's a marker. If we want to check triglycerides, that's a marker. Well, we in the what we use is a combined IgE and IgG4 food allergy screening. It has over 200 markers in there for the most common foods that we would typically eat or be exposed to. And so regardless of the body type, by determining what foods are good for us based on our internal testing of our body and what foods are bad for us, it's going to help us then show what foods we shouldn't eat and what foods we should eat. And I'll give you a good picture of this now. Good little statement here. Foods are literally mind or mood altering drugs. Does it say they're bad? No. Foods are literally mind or mood altering drugs and we are all tempted to use them just as a drug or alcohol dependent persons use chemicals to alter their moods. Now, we do that and many times we don't even know why, but we have these genetic predispositions 
to eating certain foods and what are they do they end up causing disharmony gastrointestinal problems and usually it's going to do one of two things it's either we're going to have a predisposition to be very very thin or to be overweight and so by by mixing and determining what foods they're allergic to through blood analysis and then through the psychological profile it becomes really very very easy and I'll read you a little bit more about that again now there are a mix of the natures or characteristics in all of us one characteristic or nature is generally primary and the others are secondary and having less effect on us food or the chemicals inherent in the foods those are called antigens we eat either stimulate or inhibit our glandular functions. So the, the, the adrenal dominant person has certain foods that will either stimulate or inhibit them, their, their whole activity, their um, metabolism, and it's going to affect their personality. Just as religion affects personality, people who are, 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 are in a religion that preaches grace and mercy and righteousness they are much happier and much joyous and much healthier people than those people who are preached the law. They're always the law in them that they got to fulfill all these laws to have Allah or God help them and, and like them. The same holds true for the thoughts we think, the actions we take, even the prayers we pray or don't pray. Thus everything we do, think, or eat affects the secretions of these primary glands, which in turn affect our physical, mental and spiritual natures foods and the chemicals with them have a dynamic effect on not only the physical nature of people but the psychological nature as well thus it is possible for a person to eat a particular food have gla have the gland become overstimulated and the resulting secretions of said gland will begin to adversely affect the person's physical health spiritual and psychological natures it really happens that way. And so, again, we do have predispositions based on genetics. I mean, some of my, one of my daughters is very much like me, or actually two of them, and the other daughter is very much like her mother. And it is interesting to see not only the physical similarities between those girls and their mother, and the other daughter and me. One of the daughters is much more laid back, like my wife, and the two other daughters are much more aggressive and uh, but they are classical a personalities i have no idea where that came from but of course I, I i don't know the characteristics of my biological mother because i'm adopted so i can't search out the genetic relationships of my biological parents so i assume that the a type natures of two of my daughters are coming from their grandmother their biological grandmother and much of the laid back more personality of the other daughter is coming from another part of the genetic background. But anyway, go out and find Dr. Bobinell's book. It's really good. Call a clinic if you can't remember the name of it. Uh, we have a, his, uh, he, there's an exam in his book of, that you take a real easy thing to fill out and it's like a self-analysis, not uh, of looking at your body in a mirror and that'll help you identify the body type that you are. Also. It, regardless if you're in good health or you're suffering with health problems, do consider having that combined food allergy testing test that we talked about a little bit earlier. It will open up a wonderful door to the inside of how your body is functioning, and if it's not functioning good, it will give you ideas of foods that you can eliminate from your diet, and as you do, your immune system comes back and becomes stronger, and when that becomes the case, you begin to enjoy more natural health without drugs, without surgery. You really can take good care of your body. Now it's the only one you're ever going to have. The Fellowship of the Great Physician, through its School of Health and Healing, provides classes each Thursday evening. The primary focus of these classes is biblically-based spiritual health and healing, with a brief teaching on physical health and healing. There is no charge or registration fee for these classes, but a free will offering is received. For further information on the School of Health and Healing, class time and location, or the topics discussed on today's program, contact us at the Fellowship of the Great Physician in care of Dr. Lala or Dr. Jensen at 200 Village Center Drive, Suite 100, North Oaks, Minnesota, 
651-485-5127 or telephone us at 651-484-8521. Thank you for joining us today.